Hey, this is Mike from Helium Street, and uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a recap on some of the installation uh, methods that I'm using these days. Uh, I've really found that tree installations are uh, really, really effective because we're able to get the antenna and the unit way up in the tree. I'm using less uh, uh, antenna cable, which is the LMR stuff that we've been purchasing. We still purchase the LMR uh, 240 for uh, jumpers. As you can see, this installation will have that, and I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, but what we're doing is we're hiring uh, licensed and insured tree climbers and we're going up and we're putting a pulley up in the tree. I, I, you've been using this pulley. It's been pretty effective, uh, tangle-free and so on. And so we'll hang this pulley up in a tree and um, then using paracord, uh, this type of paracord, to basically make a loop through it up at the top of the tree and then bring that loop back down. Um, and then I basically, let me start from the beginning here, the very top of the antenna. So this is a McGill 6 DBI. I really like those McGills. Uh, I think that Spotminer has uh, some really great antennas uh, available also. So if you want to check out the, uh, the Spotminer uh, link, and I think I might have also a discount code for Spotminer. You'll be able to use that and, and check out the description section of this video. But anyway, this happens to be a McGill antenna, uh, and I've got it uh, basically zip-tied to a carabiner-type um, clip. And I'll use that, uh, that carabiner-type clip in a lot of different areas on this installation, but I basically zip-tie it to the top. And... That's usually pretty secure. I use I, I double, triple, quadruple up on the zip ties at the very top because I want to make sure that uh, my antenna will stay up. But uh, <clears throat> this unit's not suspended by the antenna. Basically, the antenna is suspended within the system. And so I have two pieces of paracord that are coming off the top of the box, and I'll explain that box in a minute. Uh, and I use those stainless steel eyelets uh, that go through the top of my outdoor enclosure. And then I just loop them up and I fray my ends with a, a small torch. And then that goes up to the loops through the carabiner. And then the antenna just basically attaches itself right to the outside edge of the paracord. And so the antenna just hangs off the top of it. Um, and so the antenna is really just kind of along for the ride. Okay, so then the two pieces of paracord come down and then they attach right into the top, as you can see here with a couple more clips. Um, I use silicone caulk to put in the hole after I've drilled the hole in the top of my enclosure. Uh, it's just so that there's no, that's not a leak point. Um, coming out of the antenna, I have a LMR240. I just got a small jumper of that. And that goes down into a waterproof connection, which is in the bottom of the screw and through the bottom of this um, outdoor enclosure. Of course, links to all this stuff in the description section of the video. And then I have a waterproof. Uh, so, okay, so backing up a little bit. And so that's basically what I have, the basic enclosure. I use a, some, I always throw a couple packets of sil silica desiccant uh, gel packets into the enclosure also just as a matter of practice to pick up any potential small bits of humidity or you know if there happens to be a really really slow drip maybe i'll pick up some of that humidity into that silica gel pack um so you can see up in top here i double nut it with washers and i use um a basically a waterproof connection for my ethernet. And so I'm running ethernet all the way up the tree and into this. Okay, so this is the way the setup looks. I basically have a box of Cat5. I basically have a box of Cat5, outdoor variable type Cat5e, okay? And I pull it out and then I run that right in. I loop it right there just so that I'm not pulling on my connection. I loop it right over over the edge or the through the uh, that part of the paracord with a zip tie. And then that goes up and then right up inside through that um, waterproof connection, okay? The waterproof connection then is the type that has a jumper. And then that jumper 
just just basically what it looks like. It starts here and then it goes all the way to here, and that's Ethernet. And so, and then I inside my box, then I have a um, a splitter. So this is the splitter. This happens to be the type of splitter for a Bobcat. And then I also have, of course, we have the splitter here that I use for um, my rack, um, my my rack hot spots um, that I get from Calchip, and also um, minted. And then uh, also this will work also for uh, sense cap. So and among many others. I mean, you just have to. You can take a look at the description section of the video, and you can pick up the splitter that you need. Um, of course, back at the back at the router end where you're plugging into your router, you need to have a injector. So back there is where you have the injectors. And let me grab one of those real quick. This is the PO is like similar to this PoE um, injector. Okay. I've used a couple different types. The link that I have in the description section of the video might look a little bit different, but um, basically they work. Okay, so I'm coming off. Okay, so if you wanna see how to waterproof your connections, there's videos on Helium Street, uh, the YouTube channel on how to do the proper waterproofing here. But I've waterproofed it. I've come right off the antenna with my LMR240, and then that comes down. And then that's basically just a small piece. See, it's just a small little piece. It comes down, and then it comes right up inside. And then I, I use a little bit of extra silicone caulk right here because it's a little bit small for that type of waterproof connector. And so I usually use a little bit of silicone there. And then that's the other end, which is the, um, which is the connection that would go into the bottom of your... Um, or into the side or the into your hot spot. Okay, all right. So, and like I was saying, you can use this enclosure that I have here for for Bobcat, and so it'll fit Bobcat. It's a little, not a whole lot of room side to side, but up and down there's plenty of room. Just side to side, it, it does fit, but just um, there there really is plenty of room for a Bobcat. It just maybe a little bit hard to show here. Um, it works for sense cap, okay? So it works for sense cap, and it'll work for the uh, rack and the minted hotspots also. Okay, so uh, like I said, I mean, there's there, it's really not a not a real complicated setup. You can kind of see what you need to do, and I usually paint the bottom of my, and the back of my units with a brown spray paint, and then I try to keep the top of it a little less spray painted because I want the heat to reflect off the top or the sunlight to reflect off the top to reduce heat. But I do like to uh, put a little brown spray paint around the edges so that the homeowner or whoever's looking up in the tree in the wintertime, they're not going to see this thing hanging up there. It'll be really uh, concealed. And then, and like I said, I've got my, my ethernet here looping through and then going down right into the box. And so what I'll do is I'll take this right to the site I'll, I'll, using the string that I have going through the pulley, I'll pull this up into the tree. And after every, obviously everything's connected and it's completely shut with a miner inside of it and all the, everything's plugged in. I'll pull this up into the tree. This'll just, this ethernet will string behind it up into the tree. Um, and then it'll just keep pulling out, pulling out, pulling out out of the top of the box. And then basically that's where I start to uh, basically just trench it back to the house from there. And so it's a continuous piece of, of ethernet. And so there's no splices at all. The only spot, the only spot where there's a splice or any kind of connection change is right here inside the, the unit and then back to the uh, router. So I try to keep it a continuous piece and I don't try to do any splices, obviously. You don't want to do that if you can avoid it. Um, now I don't go over 300 feet with my ethernet because just it's not rated to go any higher than that. Um, but that's really never a problem. Uh, that, but once you get this thing up into a tree that's 60, maybe even, I've even done insulation 70 feet in the air. 
uh, that's an awesome height for these for these um, antennas, and you'll connect to everything in your town, <laughs> pretty much. At least that's what I found when in a lot of the installations that I've done, is that uh, these tree installations, um, yeah, you're kind of you've got it stuffed up in the middle of the branches and the trees, but um, the radio frequencies uh, shoot through them pretty well, and you get out and you get over the tops of the other trees when you pick a real tall one and it's a really great installation. So I just wanted to make sure also that you remember that you need to have a licensed and insured uh, tree climber to get that pulley up into the air uh, and get that string run through it so that when you get to the site, all you have to do is on the, from the ground, all you're doing is pulling that up into, up into the tree. There might be a little bit of work to staple or connect the ethernet to the trunk of the tree along, you know, as, along the side of the tree, you'll have that ethernet kind of stapled to it and use just basic staples or fasteners to do that. Um, just so that that ethernet's not flopping in the wind. But once you get down to the base of the tree, then that's where you just basically trench it. You just trench it into the sod uh, all the way to the house and then you poke it through the house and caulk it up and do all the right things there to make sure that you're entering the property properly. Um, but yeah, it's a really good, great installation. Um, it's, this is, this is really the way that I prefer to do them now. Uh, I don't really do a lot of other installations other than tree installations. It costs you a couple bucks for the tree climber, but that's obviously well worth it. I wouldn't want to get up in the tree myself. I'm not qualified to do that. There's a lot of special equipment and there's a lot of special procedures and so on that these guys use to go up the tree safely. And, um, you know, there's all sorts of hazards up there. There's rotten tree limbs. There's uh, falling tree limbs, potentially, if you get connected to the wrong thing up there. Um, there's, uh, of course, you've got power lines to deal with. And so your licensed and insured tree climber is going to be able to navigate all those those uh, roadblocks way better than you will be able to. So I just really want to encourage you not to try to get up into that tree by yourself. Um, leave that part to the professionals. It's really not that expensive. So um, anyway, so there's the installation. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you uh, have any, um, any questions about links on the products that we're using, you'll be able to go to the description section of the video and pick up every one of the links. I'll have everything in there. Um, and of course you can go to heliumstreet.com also to pick up other video, um, video installation uh, content, you know, for all the different types of installations that we've done for helium hotspots. So, uh, and of course you can pick up that uh, spot miner um, discount code also from, from the description section of the video also. And uh, that'll get you maybe a Mary IoT miner, or that'll get you um, one of their one of their uh, their antennas. They have got a re really good selection of antennas um, at Spot Miner, and uh, I think those those guys are super good in terms of support, also. So uh, they'll help you navigate maybe some of the miner related questions. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.